Hey there, traveling Troy here. So you bought that van and you built into an awesome little home on wheels and now you're thinking about hitting the road, gassing that van up and going out and exploring. Well, have you thought about how you're going to stay connected with friends and family and the rest of the world if you want to? Sure, a cell phone might be able to handle that. What are the other options out there? That's what we're going to talk about in today's video. Staying connected while on the road. Traveling Troy, Van Life Simplified, new videos weekly. Well, if you're going to do any extensive traveling around the country, you're obviously going to want your cell phone. But one option you might want to think about is getting a hotspot. A combination of both is actually what I suggest, one of each. So there are four major cell phone networks in the United States. I currently have, and for the past two months, um, I've had a plan with each of the four major networks, major carriers, and I've tested them out. And today I want to share with you what I've learned from each one. Basically, you'll get good service with any one of these four major carriers. You've got Sprint, you've got T-Mobile, you've got Verizon, and you've got AT&T. Each one of them has cell phone options as well as data plans. It is my opinion that you want to get your cell phone service on one of the networks and a hotspot set up on one of the other networks. So typically, if you're in a camping area, let's say out in the forest or something, and your cell phone isn't getting a signal, well, maybe your hotspot on the other network is getting a signal. First, let's talk about Sprint, the Sprint network. They actually recently merged with T-Mobile, or not really recently, I think it was back in 2018, but I don't know how much they've actually done to merge the two networks, to, networks together. But Sprint is, it's good in cities, large cities, medium to large cities. Uh, it's good out on the interstate uh, when you're going from large city to large city. It's not so great out in rural areas though. I would say it's average to good out in rural areas. And uh, in, my opinion, in my opinion, it is the worst network of the group when you're traveling away from larger cities. And here's a look at Sprint's network coverage. As you can see, it's pretty good from the middle of the country all the way out to the East Coast, but the west side of the country has a whole lot of open, uncovered areas. So even though I said that Sprint is the, in my opinion, the worst network of all, my cell phone is actually using the Sprint network. Actually, it's using Ting, which is a reseller of Sprint. So with Ting, you can of course buy new phones, you can buy refurbished phones, uh, or you can bring your own phone. What's neat about the Ting service is you pay for what you use. So it makes it easy to kind of manage your bill. Let's say you, you only use 560 minutes of talk time. Well, the way Ting works is the zero to, zero to 500 is one cost, like three bucks, and uh, 500 to 1,000 is another cost, like five or seven dollars, and then it, it, it goes up as you use more minutes or more text or more data. With Ting, you can use the bill estimator. So here's an example where you have one phone, one line, it costs six dollars, uh, you get 500 minutes, which would cost about nine dollars, and then a thousand texts, five bucks for a thousand texts, and then let's say 500 megabytes is ten bucks, so your bill would be a total of thirty dollars. Now in my case, I don't really use a whole lot of talk time. So here's kind of an example of what my bill looks like just about every month. The one line, $6, I, I haven't used a talk minute in over two months. So put that at zero. And I rarely ever go over 100 texts uh, because most of my friends have an Apple, have an iPhone, and basically you send free texts back and forth through iPhone, use, iPhone using the iMessage service. So really it's just the people that I know that are using basically Androids that I get charged an actual text for. And then uh, I rarely ever go over my 500 megabytes because I use other ways to, to, to get data. So my bill is about $19 a month. Well next up is Verizon. Verizon is great in medium to large areas, medium to large cities or towns. Uh, it's also great along interstate highways uh, and it's average to good in rural areas. But the problem with Verizon is, is it too popular? 
sometimes towers get congested. So if you're in an area, like if you're in a big city that maybe has a hundred towers, well, it kind of disperses the usage up amongst all the towers. But if you're in a small area, like a forest that has one tower, everyone in that forest, plus probably the town next to the forest, they're all using that one tower. So if everyone has Verizon, then that's going to really bog down the tower and slow down your speeds. Verizon has some of its own unlimited data plans, which unlimited plans are amazing for when you're traveling. But let me point out, let me talk about two uh, other companies that use the Verizon towers with unlimited plans. You've got Visible and you've got Yahoo Mobile. But first, let's take a look at Verizon's network coverage. As you can see, it is pretty similar to Sprint. Sprint may be better in some areas, as a matter of fact, and Verizon may be better than Sprint's areas. But there's a lot of open areas there, the white areas, a lot of open, non-coverage, no-coverage areas. So Visible uses the Verizon Towers. It's $40 a month for unlimited data. Now, they do cap you at 5 megabits per second speeds, uh, which let's say a Netflix, maybe you need one megabit or so. Actually, you can get by with less with Netflix. But so basically that tells you that five megabit bytes is plenty for one person. Actually, it's probably, it's really good for two. You can have two people streaming Netflix at the same time and, it's, and there's no problem. So the five megabit limit, data speed limit isn't a problem. So if you go with Visible, um, your first month will only be $25 and then after that it's $40 a month. Now you do have to, well, you can either bring your own phone that is compatible with the Verizon network or you can buy one of their phones and their phones are pretty cheap. Uh, I, I remember when they first started they had a $19 phone. I don't know if they still sell that one any, anymore but probably about $50 to $75 for their cheapest phones and then you can always go up with, to an Apple, mine's only a 6, but you can go up to an Apple 10 or whatever, uh, an iPhone 10 and, uh, and you know spend all your money on that but now the main downfall here with visible is if the network gets congested they may slow your speeds down uh, because you're kind of a you're not the high priority uh, customer that is the customer paying full full price for their Verizon phones that's who gets the the fastest speeds now Yahoo mobile is exactly the same thing almost as visible. It still uses the Verizon Towers. You pay $40 a month for the service. Uh, it has the five megabit uh, speed limit, which is no problem for one person or two people. Uh, you can bring your own phone to the network or you buy one of theirs. And speeds also are reduced uh, if the network is congested. Well, my main internet service while I'm on the road is with Yahoo Mobile, which uses the uh, Verizon network. So what I did is I bought one of their inexpensive phones. At the time, it was this one. It was about $50. And what I do, I don't even use it as a phone. This is used as my hotspot, right? So what I do is I take this little router. It's a, uh, a TP-Link router. I'll link it in the description. Uh, I just take a little router like this, and it is, uh, it's USB-powered. It's got to stay plugged into USB. And there's also a cable that connects the phone that charges the phone up. Keep your, so while this is plugged in, you can also charge your phone at the same time. Anyways, what I do is I connect with this phone to the Yahoo mobile network, and then I connect this little router to it so that all my devices you know, can connect to this router instead of just one, one item connecting to this phone. Now, even though this Yahoo mobile is my main internet source, it bogs down big time whenever I'm in an area with minimal towers and lots of people. It gets really slow. Uh, and I, how do I know that? It's because I'll get up at like two o'clock in the morning or three o'clock in the morning or you know, early at you know like early for early coffee, like at five o'clock in the morning, and I'll check it and the speed's really fast. And as soon as everyone gets up, the speeds drop right back down. So so popularity is definitely something you need to consider when picking one of these network services. Yeah, so as as I said earlier, T Mobile and Sprint have merged. So T-Mobile, I've never used their phone service actually, but uh, what I do is I use them for their data service. I'm kind of they're one of I'm testing T-Mobile and I'm testing AT&T. So my Sprint phone, my little iPhone Sprint phone, is my main, is my only phone service that I, that I use at all. And then, 
and my Yahoo mobile setup is what I use is my main data use but what I decided to do is get T-Mobile and AT&T and I wanted to test out their data service so what I found out is that T-Mobile is just fine in medium to large cities. Uh, it's great on the interstate, and it does pretty well in, uh, in rural areas. And I think it might have to do with it's because it's less popular than like Verizon. So I'll test them at the same time. My Verizon, supposedly way better, uh, I can't get a signal or it's extremely slow. My T-Mobile is working like a champ because there's not as much competition for the tower usage. And here is a look at T-Mobile's network coverage. Now that's a lot of colors on that screen. So what you're looking for now is the black areas. The black areas are where there's no coverage. And you know, once again, it's those rural areas that have the least amount of coverage throughout all the networks, really. Some are a little better than others though. Back when I was in California this past winter, I had an AT&T data service which was working great uh, and it was unlimited but the problem was they ended up eliminating that plan so I didn't have service there for actually quite a while while I was in California but I still had the little hotspot so I decided to look around and find out if I can get an AT&T service another one going with this and I found that but first let me talk about a T-Mobile service this particular device because AT&T and T-Mobile kind of use the same network uh, technologies, this device works for both. So I have a little card that I can slip in here for AT&T and pull it out and I slip a little T-Mobile card in here. My favorite hotspot data plan with T-Mobile is the $10 2 gig plan. Now of course you already have to have, well you have to either bring your own hotspot or you gotta buy one from them. But if you already have one, this plan is awesome. You pay 10 bucks, you get two gigs. I know, that's horrible, right? You can blow through two gigs in a day. I hear you. Okay, but that two gigs is at max speed. Once you hit the two gigs, they reduce you down to 3G speeds or about 120 uh, bits per second, okay? Now, that sounds horrible too, right? But 100, that's 3G is still good enough to do your social media, to, you know, to do some basic web browsing, um, you know, to do email, uh, plenty of things you can do and actually you can still do watch YouTube videos kind of at a lower um, a lower resolution or even do Netflix I've done it all 3g still works fine for those now here's the thing you're paying ten dollars for two gigs for this okay once you get to 50 gigs they're gonna limit you a little bit they're gonna they're gonna uh, limit you and on, on a priority list so you're no longer top priority you move down the list so if other people are using that tower at the same time you're gonna be down on the list a little bit so you're gonna slow down considerably but that's fine you just pay ten dollars for 50 gigs 2 gigs at max speeds 48 gigs at 3G okay that's about 20 cents that's 20 cents per gig an amazing price this, this uh, particular plan actually reminds me back a couple years ago, maybe two years ago, I had a, a Verizon 3G uh, hotspot and I was paying $5 a month and I used that service for about a year and a half. Of course, I had to pay like $65, $75 for the hotspot, but then it was $5 a month. So this is extremely close to that, but with the other one, I, I was blowing, I was doing like 200 gigs you know, a month. This one, you know, you're gonna get to 50 and then you're gonna notice a drop off. So, I like this plan, it's a great plan. Okay, so now we've come to AT&T Wireless. Uh, it's from, now I've, I don't use their cell phones, I just use it for the data plans, because like I said, I pay $19 a month for this Ting on the Sprint Network cell phone. It's not the best, but it's 19 bucks a month. No one's gonna be able to beat that. I mean, of course, the more I use, the more it costs, but I usually keep it between, yeah, between $20 and $30. So, with AT&T, like T-Mobile and Verizon, I use the data only. Um, from what I've determined, AT&T is fine in, in uh, you know, anywhere from small to large cities. They're fine on the interstates. Uh, they're, they're just fine out in rural, rural areas as well. And that probably, once again, has to do with they're less popular than Verizon, so the towers aren't overwhelmed. Now, 
plans can always change okay this is being you know this is being uploaded in early September so something can change down the road but right now AT&T doesn't that I know of offer any unlimited data plans so here's a look at AT&T's network coverage it actually looks as far as the no coverage areas it looks way better except for that big chunk in Idaho and the big chunk in Montana it actually looks way better than the other uh, the other providers and from what I noticed use, using AT&T when I was in California and Arizona and other places it worked amazingly so I definitely give a thumbs up on their data especially if you can find a grandfathered unlimited data plan so if you're not planning on streaming a lot of video while you're traveling one of these AT&T plans may work well for you if you're just planning on doing you know uh, internet browsing maybe some social media uh, you know some basic things like that and even maybe you know maybe some YouTube videos uh, at lower res uh, well these plans may work well for you I actually got the $50 40 gigs plan at a dollar 25 per gig to test it out and I'm on my second month now of continuing test it works amazing amazingly uh, it works better than all the other services that I've talked about today uh, in my particular area right now but that's because I'm I'm a top tier customer paying for the data and they're giving me max speeds with no slowdowns so you still have to bring your own hotspot or buy one from them and I already had one like I said I basically swap out the little uh, little chip between uh, T-Mobile and AT&T and uh, so I can use this one device for two services and these are they're both the the test services are using this right now so it's really not a bad deal if you think about it $35 for 20 gigs at $1.75 per gig or $50 for 40 gigs at $1.25 per gig both great plans so if you're gonna be doing some extensive traveling in your van or RV I would suggest getting two uh, services uh, on two different networks your phone on one network and your hotspot on another network your phone's going to be used for texting for talk and for some minimal data and your hotspot you can use it for streaming tv youtube uh what else you know you can do social media you can uh, watch the news and things like that so which networks are you using let me know in the comments and maybe you maybe you found some cool deals that you can let the rest of us know about